Right, first things first, then let's let's do the latest golf news. Then uh, where should we start? Um, now I did have a quick chat with with Tom and Zoe off air, and, and they said that we're, we're, they're more than happy for us to go on with this news for for hours and hours. Then they're, they're willing to wait. They're going to stay up quite late because we're going to do a long news section here because we're going to talk about the Sunningdale foursome. Now we gave it the big build up last week or a couple of weeks ago. You know, plenty of juniors involved. You know, lots of junior winners uh, in, in many years, including last year. So so what happened this year then? Ian, I'm going to give you yeah, can, can give I just... loads of time here. Give us a big build up here. Tell us what happened then. You've got the floor is yours. Carry on. Well, for the second year running, we managed to secure a broadcast deal with Sunnydale Forsons to broadcast the 18 ounce Sunnydale Forsons, just like we did for the 88 Sunnydale Forsons, which was an overwhelming success. Uh, so they had us back to cover the 89th Sunnydale Forsons live. And we're going to do the semi final and final. Uh, of course, completely live, free to air for people to tune in and watch. We arrived on Tuesday, day one, lovely day, a little bit cold, but you expect that, don't you? Uh, in fact, Steve and I, we both sat down, we, we spoke to Charlie Hull, we spoke to Ryan Evans, we spoke to a number of different players, did we, Oliver Clayton, of course, we know very well as well. Uh, and it was all looking quite rosy, wasn't it, until uh, 24 hours later, and the weather decided to play its part. And unfortunately, the Sunningdale Forsums, the 89th Sunningdale Forsums, was cancelled. Uh, so what a shame that is. But I can assure you, we will be back for the 90th edition of the Sunningdale Forsman. I have spoken to Christian Foreman, Director of Golf at Sunningdale, and they would like us to come back and broadcast live the semi-final and final in 2024. So that's what happened. It was a washout, I'm afraid. Sorry, everyone. It was uh, it was a great day on, the fir- on day one. Uh, but that's as good as it got, unfortunately. But a huge thank you, by the way, to Sunningdale for, for sort of looking after us and everything. And I must say... Um, a hell of a lot of work goes into that. Do you know, it's not this happens in sport, unfortunately. Um, I'm involved in a few other sports, and it happens. It happens more than I'd like it to happen, but it does. Um, but a lot of work goes into the preparation for an event like that, from not just the golf club, but from our side on the broadcast side of things as well. And then, of course, the whole thing just gets washed out. But that is sport. That is the risk we take. And, uh, yeah, it happened. So there we go. So so our 20-minute news section, then, talking about the Sun and Air Force, and has been ditched then, has it? Is that correct? No, we can talk about it. So uh, <laughs> what happened is there's no winner. <laughs> uh, so congratulations, actually. No, congratulations to Lottie Wode and Rachel Gordy because they are still the defending champions. Ah, no, no. Because I, I got a text message from Ryan Evans to say that he is he is the joint winner of the 2023 Sunnydale Foursomes. because How the end he of the day, no that one out? This How year. on earth has he managed to claim that one? To be fair, to be fair to him, Charlie Hill, they they did get through their first round match. I think they won six and five, so, so they, were, they were they were one of the better winners, kind of thing, from that first round. So they can kind of half claim to say that they were. Yeah, the, but you can't they claim were, you've won the Masters. The form you can't yeah. say you've won the Masters just because you led the leaderboard after day one, can you? Yes, yeah. I, know, I know. Right, let's let's find some news then. So bear in mind that it's been cut short already. So uh, yeah, yeah. there has been some competitions. Uh, overseas then the Spanish Amateur Championship this obviously is a men's amateur championship and the women's amateur championship but juniors play a big part in it and once again right at the top of the leaderboard again British boys champion Albert Hansen from Sweden he lost in the final on the last hole to 20 year old Nicola Gerdhudson from Switzerland uh, Hansen as well beat Welsh boys champion Colin Burford in the last four and also in the last four as well was Pierre Vernick from Germany another junior golfer so lots of juniors doing really well in that that was the men's side. Women's side, even better, because 17-year-old Nora Sundberg from Sweden, she won the competition, beat reigning European ladies amateur champion Savannah de Bock uh, from Belgium. In fact, Sundberg did really well because she led the stroke play qualifying. Then she won the match play as well. Um, uh, this is a player who played in the uh, Junior Solon Cup uh, two years ago. And actually, this event is a qualifier for the Junior Solon Cup. And it's also a qualifier for the Junior Ryder Cup. I think you've got the latest standings uh, to come up here. The, the Junior Ryder Cup takes place in Rome from September the 6th, 26th to the 28th. It goes ahead of the of the main edition, the, the 44th edition of the Ryder Cup. So just looking at those standings, that, so the way it works is the three girls and three boys automatically selected for the team. 12 players selected altogether. So six more players will be picked by team captain Stephen Gallagher mentioned there uh, per Vernick there who, who moved up to the second place in the standings on the back of his performance um, in the uh, Spanish Amateur Championship. Sean Keeling as well, he did actually, he did pretty well actually in the Spanish Amateur. He got knocked out in the third round by the eventual champion. So obviously no disgrace in that. He actually lost on the 19th of Seoul, so really unlucky 
there. Then the um, and, and looking at the girls side of there, there's Noah there who, who who obviously won the tournament up in second place there. Also, it's a bit of a bit of a you, you, your question about countries to play. There's a bit of a spot the flag competition as well, trying to recognise some of the nations there who are in there. Well, I don't um, recognise Sean's flag. Uh, no, you're right. It is Ireland. Is Believe it? it or not? Yes. Apparently, it's an Irish flag I've never seen before. Uh, well, you, yeah, well there you go. That's 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 the, that's the Europeans for you. Perhaps they're perhaps they're going with a different one. Perhaps the perhaps that's the EU flag. Who knows? Well, I can tell you the rest, but I just can't tell you, Sean. Um, but if you <laughs> say it's Ireland, I trust you. Uh, um, I uh, I am I am led to believe. But there you go. So yes, uh, the next qualifying event for the boys and the girls is the French International Boys and Girls Championship that takes place on Easter weekend from April the sixth to april the 10th now hot news uh, i know you like your little um thing which goes across the bottom saying breaking news breaking news breaking news because i have some breaking news for you oh hang on yeah let, let me um wait for it wait for it wait we just find it because i wasn't prepared for that you see there yeah you go, breaking news. news right <laughs> now hot off the press because literally it's just happened today the bernard darwin youth salvo took place at rye golf club it played over uh, 36 holes yesterday 36 holes today the winner Tommy Bowen from Welsh Pool Golf Club uh, shot 79, 68, 66, and then 72 today. Uh, I think he's only 20 years old. I know he's certainly, I mean, I know he's under 21. I think he is 20 years old. So another really good young player. Uh, one by one shot from Harry Mallin from Bogna Regis and Alex North from St Andrews Golf Club. So, uh, so well done to Tommy. Straight up, hot, hot off the press there. Um, right, uh, Shires Junior Golf. So this is an event we, we covered a little while ago with the. Um, the summer series that the winners played with Charlie Hull in a, in a round of golf. They've just completed the winter series. The winners of the three divisions there, Oliver Golby, Evan Fowler and Caelan Beveridge, a gold, silver and bronze division order winners. Uh, so they will go on now to represent the Shires Junior Golf Tour in the ex Alexis Brown Foundation Day, which took place at Nelcott on Saturday, June the 17th. That's a qualifier for the British Par 3 Championships, where some of the biggest names nice. in the game uh, playing that, so maybe not. When I say just names of the game, I mean pros and celebrities as well. It's a really good event, that. So, um, so yeah. Now you mentioned a little bit earlier about the Progress Junior Golf Tour, uh, the, the Progress Junior Golf website, and putting all the competitions. I spent a lot of week, a lot of time this week putting up events, all the latest events. There's now, believe it or not, over a thousand competitions on that website. So if you are looking to play in a golf competition, a junior competition in the UK or Ireland. Then go on there. I've, there's been I've updated with the ones from Scotland, Ireland, and also all the way across the UK. I mean, there's still plenty there to, to put on there because there are some uh, junior opens which haven't been confirmed yet. There are a few tours which have a few more dates to confirm. But I tell you, there's a heck of a lot of events in there which are going to be taking place. As we well know, the US Masters, generally speaking, first or second week in April is normally the start of the golf season. Yeah. Well, actually, even well, before that, no, we've no. got Sunday Inter- Four Sons is the start of the golf season. So. Well, that's next year. That's the start of yeah. next season. Yes, yes. It normally would be yes, but uh, but yeah. So yeah. So I'll I'll keep it look, and, and and message for any club out there. If if you have got a junior open, and you want to announce it, please get in touch. We'll get it on the website. We'll get it pushed, and we'll try and get as many juniors playing in your event as possible. So, right now, just finally, then let's let's cover the something which was mentioned in the last podcast, uh, the England Golf Awards, which took place at the Hilton Manchester. Uh, presented by Claire Bolding. Uh, Lifetime Achievement Award and Lifetime Service Award went to David Phillips from Salford Golf Club. He's worked for over 36 years to get more young people into the game of golf, so well done to him. Uh, other awards, Participation and Development Coach the went to Mike Dodd. Uh, Women and Girls Trailblazer uh, went to the Girl Guiding Project in Hertfordshire. Uh, Club of the Year was Seckford. Uh, Diversity Inclusion Champion was the Muslim Golf Association. Sustainability Project of the Year was Big Big Golf Club. Volunteer of the Year, that went jointly to Sonia McCarthy and Kirsty Jolly. Tournament Venue of the Year, I know this is an event whereby you uh, some uh, you covered a few big events in the last few years. So it went to Sherwood Forest, which hosted the McGregor Trophy, which is, of course, the England Boys Under-16 I Championship. have broadcast at Sherwood Forest, actually. Absolutely. Uh, I played I it. it. Well, yeah. Yep, yep, badly. I might add. Um, I was all <laughs> over the place that day. I'll tell you, it was. It was a. I'd had. A, I'd had a few to drink the night before, shall we say? So, uh, so yeah, wasn't wasn't feeling at my best. Um, performance of the year. You weren't like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> performance. Performance of the year. Uh, there was a few juniors involved in this. Lottie Rhodes, as you mentioned, there. She was one of the nominees. It went to Dylan Shaw Radford, uh, who won the Boys Championship. So, one to Dylan. Uh, count of the year was Bedfordshire. They, they've done a lot of work with 
in particular the girls' golf. They, they've combined them into the ladies' section. They did a lot of work with girls' golf. And finally, Young Volunteer of the Award went to Emily Horse. I think we've got some uh, photos of her presentation. There she is with the award. Uh, like I say, it was presented to her by Claire Baldwin and also um, Nick Doherty, who we mentioned a little bit earlier um, off air. He, uh, Sky Sports TV presenter, he, uh, lovely tweet saying, saying congratulations to her. So, um, so well done to Emily. And I think it's only fair that we actually hear from Emily. We're going we're gonna to hear from her during the podcast, but let's hear from her talking about the award. And, and, and what was her reaction when she was first given it? Let's hear from Emily. I was very shaky, to be fair, going up there. But it's kind of, yeah, very shocked. It's obviously with all the stuff that I do and stuff like that, you do it because you want to make a difference and you want to make it better for other people, not to get recognised for it and that kind of thing. So anybody that got it would have been well-deserved. But yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. Just to explain, though, for, for, for those who aren't aware of what you have done, just to just to give us a bit of a background of, of, of what you think you might have got the award for then. Uh, so <laughs> we get the list started. Yes. Uh, I'm a National Young Ambassador with England Golf and the Golf Foundation. I am, on well, I'm the chairperson for the Girls Leadership Panel for the country with the Golf Foundation. Um, a lot of volunteering at different events so i helped coach god knows how many hundreds of the kids golf in little um in little groups at the festival of sport that was quite cool i've helped at the bmw pga so i did the junior coaching and lit, running little activities for them i did that over there i've taught the group coaching sessions at belton park I've helped with them at Milton. I've, yeah, <laughs> at, at work. So I'm, I help coach the ones up there. And also with, they mentioned it on the night, but there's a charity called Little Miracles near here um, that are predominantly for like seriously ill children. And we brought them over to Peter and Milton for the day and ran a load of, golfing activities for them and they absolutely loved it so that's a kind of a little little trips and drafts of bits <laughs> that I've done recently. and also and also as well as you did some volunteer work with the blind golf association as well yes I did yeah we mentioned that on one of the other podcasts when we spoke yes. about that but yeah I went and helped and did a load of ball spot in and helped out with the England and Wales blind golf event but if there is someone who wants to get involved with volunteering, how do, how do they go about doing that? Well, there's lots of ways you can kind of go about it. Obviously, I started my kind of volunteering at a club level. So like with the junior coaching sessions on a Saturday and stuff like that, that's where I kind of started. And then it just kind of escalated from there. Obviously, club, there's county stuff that you can go and help with. Just they're always like adults or younger people. They're always looking for help. and extra extra pair of eyes and kind of little little bits of helping hand here and there the thing with golf is there's lots of stuff to do there's kind of whether it comes to events or just running coaching sessions and stuff like that so there's always things that you can get involved in whether that's a club county or what level you can get involved at so that was emily horston who won the young volunteer of the year award of england golf awards and welcome to emily